This is the Jordan River Arts Council's Artist Gathering. We're meeting at Stonehenge Gardens between East Jordan and Charlevoix. And this is our second site for the summer. But the history of the Artist Gatherings began in 2006 um, at the Jordan River Arts Council, as it often happens. There was a brainstorming session where people that had taken Pat Tinney's uh, watercolor and drawing class had said that they wanted to continue meeting. And we at that time were planning a folk art exhibit in the fall. And also at that time, one of our board members, Babs Young, was photographing barns in Antrim County and documenting them for the state of Michigan. So the idea came about, why don't we schedule regular meetings over the summer at interesting barn sites and let the artists come and paint in plein air. The following year, I think we went to gardens. The third year we did uh, water scenes. The fourth year we looked at places where people could either choose between a, a, a vista or where they could focus in on interesting things um, at the same site. And by the next year we decided that really people find something to paint wherever you go. We've also been very gratified seeing the artists progress from year to year and seeing their work get better and better and seeing their focus. We set up about eight uh, sites every summer that start from mid-June to mid-August and uh, we look for sites that are beautiful to paint, that have safe parking, that have bathroom facilities, and that have something for everyone. It's a good group to be involved with because you can learn something from from everyone in the group. couple words of background People for many, many, many years, of course, have been doing plein air painting and have been interested. So we wanted to explore it more. And I've read that it became really popular in the early 19th century when paint manufacturers were able to package and make pigments even more transportable so that now we can be out and be out and about and have our, our paint so much easier to use than centuries ago. This is Sherry K. Marshall. She's a pastel artist. What I'd like to ask is, do you have some advice to give somebody who's beginning to uh, come out and work in plein air? Well, don't do what I did the first time. Give up and go fishing. <laughs> <laughs> Um, take workshops. It's a real good idea to take workshops and to work with other artists because you, we share each other's ideas and we learn a lot that way. I look for a place that won't be so affected by the movement of the sun. Okay. Like for instance, this uh, barn or shed that I'm doing right now, um, I'm working on the side of it that'll continue to be in shadow all day. I rough it in. I don't start out with any details. I just rough it in to see if my shapes are right because if you like if I were to start and do all the details on the side of the barn and, and or the shed and then after I've done all that work I realize you know what I made that side too long or too short mm -hmm. and then I have to undo all that work and you almost cry you almost want to leave it wrong mm -hmm. and so to rough in lights and darks so look at values. Values is the most important thing more and more and more important than color you get the values right. And you can tell the values by squinting. So that's why I have all these frown wrinkles because I squint a lot. <laughs> Great. Um, speaking of Wagbo, one of my most memorable times was uh, when you, when you uh, um, kind of did that workshop at Wagbo, but mm -hmm. when you went around to look at everybody's paintings, do you remember what happened? Yeah, I know. The, the turkeys knocked over all my pastels. And they were grabbing, these, I work with pastel pencils for detail, they were picking them out and running off with them. <laughs> and then someone came and said, the turkeys got into your pastels, and I went back and they were all, and then it scared them so much that they pooped on them. So now I had <laughs> pastels that were not only getting dirt on them, but they were pooped on and, and then it started raining. Remember that? <laughs> so I'm trying to find them all. The green ones are really hard to find in the grass. <laughs> And I'm um, running around trying to find where they dropped the pastel pencils when they ran off with them, and it was hilarious. This is Paula Cordes, and she's uh, 
working in oils, Paul? I am. I'm working in oils. oils. Um, how long have you been plein air painting? This is my third year. Three summers ago, I took a workshop with Alan Maciej. Okay. And um, he was supposed to have other people in it, but um, it turned out to just be a one-on-one. -on -one. And he was amazing. I learned a lot from Alan. And he's the one. Um, I've, been, I've been involved in art for a lot of years. And I have a studio in Cincinnati, and I have a studio um, in my home on Torch. But um, I told Alan I wanted to get a lot more involved in the art community up here. I wanted to meet a lot of people and other artists. And he gave me a list of all things to do, and at the top of the list was to uh, get involved with the Jordan River Arts Group. And Pioneer is just such a different approach to studio art. And um, I think sometimes it's uh, more difficult and it can be a little frustrating. Uh, trying to simplify your composition in such a beautiful space like this, but um, I think it's improved me as an artist, definitely. I, I have a love affair with Northern Michigan, and um, we've been coming up here with our children uh, for years. The pace, the people, everyone's so, um, we've met just wonderful, wonderful people here, and there's, they seem to be grounded and um, they're drawn by so many of the same things that I am and uh, I'm very much of an arts lover and so the music, the dance, the theater, the film festival, um, all these art venues is just really exciting for me so I really come to life up here. I'm defining my composition, I'm framing it and it allows me to figure out where the borders of my canvas are going to correspond to the borders of this. It just helps um, helps me focus on the elements of my painting and on my composition. This is Margaret Moran and she's working in watercolor today. Margaret, what kind of tools or techniques do you need to um, bring with you? I want to travel as light as possible because if I'm going to park and have to walk down a beach to get to the scene that I want or walk through woods to find the path that I, that I like, I want to be able to get everything as compact as possible. Everything I need I can fit in this backpack. I have uh, a board that I use as a backer for my uh, paintings. I have paper that I've already cut to this size that I store in here and it's ready to go. Um, I have my palette that's all decided um, where all the colors are and it's something I'm real familiar with so I use it. One of my favorite tools actually is this little box because it's a 10 inch square box it folds up nice and flat and it makes a great table. I always have bug dope, I have sunscreen with me, I have water, um, I have a viewfinder that I've made which helps me frame in the scene. It has a grid so I can you know, make a good composition. I don't always use it well, but I do have it. Um, I have a little bag with all my little gadgets, masking fluid and scrapers and sponges and texture things and pencils and erasers. Tons and tons of pencils because I never want to run out of something I can sketch with. Um, my EpiPen because I have a bee allergy and if I'm going to be out in the woods, I definitely want to have that with me. Uh, I just want to be comfortable while I'm painting and water, always water both paint with and to drink. I usually come in and, and do a quick scope out of the scene. I bring my camera with me. I take lots and lots of reference photos. I look for something that is really appealing. Usually it has to have a structure in it or a great color. Um, I often will make a decision based on is there shade <laughs> or is it something, you know, that, is it a comfortable place to sit? Um, one of the things that I, uh, find is that as I'm sketching I often will have to rethink what I have chosen as my subject because I tend to get too complicated. My one art teacher, Catherine Carey, always say, you don't have to paint the whole world, Margaret. You know, narrow it down, find something that's easy enough to work on and that you'll get a great composition with, um, you know, not having to paint a big panorama. Can you talk a bit about how you've benefited from participating in the artist gatherings? Yeah, I've, um, I'm a relatively new artist. I've only been at this for three years. And um, I took some classes, but I quickly found out about this group and joined in because I really liked any opportunity I can have to paint. Um, 
and I uh, have the feedback from other painters who are much more skilled than I am, and they've been great resources for me. And Margaret, I understand you've developed a website. Can just you, this weekend, actually. Just this weekend? <laughs> yes. Can you talk to us about how that came about and what you're planning on, um, how you're planning on utilizing that? Yeah, we've had our, my husband Jack and I, Jack is standing right over here by me, um, we've had a website that we use for our travels and we always had a sub page for that that was Margaret's Paintings. Um, but we decided that I've got such a huge amount of work that I can dedicate a website to that. So we put one together. It's got all my paintings, not all of them, but the ones that I think are decent <laughs> um, on the website and they're categorized. Um, and it shows what I do, how I've progressed over the last few years. And eventually, you know, if people want to purchase things from that website, that would be great. And can you give us your website address? It's uh, gomoran.com slash art. Great. Yes. Thank you. This is Margie Guyatt. She's a prolific painter. This is her second painting of the morning, so we're just catching her as she's starting. So I want to ask you, Margie, what do you what are the first few steps you take when you're starting a painting? First I look for a shady spot. I hate being sunburned. Hate it. And then I always, I have one of these viewfinder, and I go around and I look to see what looks good composition-wise, and I'm looking for something that's got a good shape to it, maybe some interesting color, not just a big blah thing. I don't know, people can make good paintings out of it, but I can't, I gotta have a big something, big solid something there. Is there a particular challenge that oils present when you're painting in plein air? Getting the right color, the right value. This is your second painting of today, and I notice it's rather small. So notice what? Rather small. So do you work small in plein air? As, yeah. As opposed to in your studio. Because the light changes so fast. Yeah. The light changes so fast. I mean, you get these big monster paintings, and you cannot finish those. And like, you know, the the light's always moving. I like to get out and, and do some plein air paintings. It kind of like clears the cobwebs. <laughs> you know, it keeps you on your toes. Mm -hmm. And I get bored doing the same thing all the time, so. Uh, I like country roads that go back and, you know, shade. You know, it's good to paint like where there's a lot of shadow patterns going. So there's like contrast between sunlight and shadow and uh, I look around you know it has to have an interesting design I'm always looking for like when I go out to look for a place to paint I always think now what's the most amazing thing I see out here what do I see that's amazing and then I paint that but if I don't see anything that's amazing then I look for a car to paint <laughs> because because usually Cars are like they're a solid shape and there's a color there and you know reflections so it's it's I'll go for one of those. This is a good group. This is a they always pick great places and everybody's friendly and nobody comes around and grabs your brush and says, Oh you're doing it all wrong, you gotta do it this way or you know. They're pretty cool. Although they don't serve desserts like they used to. This is Pat Tinney. She's a watercolor artist and teacher. She's taught a lot of these people that are here. Um, Pat, what do you? Th what's your? Th how is your thought process different when you're painting plein air instead of in your studio? When I'm in my studio, I usually work uh, pretty exclusively just for my mind and my memory and playing with compositions and light and dark. And when I'm here, I try or painting plein air, I try to stay a little more true to the subject and you find so many surprises as you're painting, you know, something that you thought that you understood and then you see the actual ins and outs of like the great leaves and vines and I like that surprise of the plein air versus um, and in watercolor especially because those surprises are what make it exciting for me. I mean that's what it's all about is is finding those magic moments of how light affects the color and the shape and the form. Do you have any painting tips to pass along to beginning painters? I know you do. Painting tips. Ah, do it. You know, if you feel that 
paintings in your soul, make the time, set aside the time, force yourself. I mean, it's uh, honor, honor that gift that you've been given, that inner soul moment of capturing even, it doesn't have to be perfect, you know, just finding that Zen moment of being out here and having the color and the shape and the form all come together and there's nothing better. Do you have a favorite memory of painting with the artist gatherings? I think it was the old lobe farm where the big horn cattle are and um, there were two older painters, I don't even know their names, they were working in exquisite little oils and I was walking down the road trying to find a site to, to work and to paint and came upon these two older painters standing there at their easels, cranking out these gorgeous little oils. And it was just, I don't know, it was that moment of, I am so happy to be right here, right now. This is Karen Kimmel. She's one of the coordinators of Artist Gatherings. But and why did you start plein air painting? Well, I just showed up one day and I loved it from the start. And I met a couple people in this group, Jane Diller being one, sat out in a cornfield with her and I loved it from the start. Was it hard to take that first step? It was, it was hard, uh, especially um, being around a lot of artists who seem very accomplished. Uh, I hadn't a clue how to start. So what I did the first couple of times is walk around and just watch. The process is to simplify uh, and to follow some certain rules that work with plein air. The beginner will try to paint everything around them and paint too much. So I've learned in my classes to use a viewfinder, to use it either as a portrait or landscape, um, and to try to center in on what it is that I really want to paint. Then the next thing I've learned that I never did before but that helps me is to do a thumbnail sketch. Well, I just use two markers, a medium uh, gray and a dark gray, and I leave the white on the paper, and I make a thumbnail sketch of what I want to work in. And then I can use that as a reference point because what's happened since I've started this painting is the shadows have shifted. Learn to see large shapes and to group all the individual things that you see into large shapes and to paint the large simple shapes and to try to keep it into three to five values being light to very dark. Any things in particular that you like about painting in northern Michigan? What appeals to you oh, subject wise? The, the, everything appeals to me in northern Michigan. I cannot drive down the street or the road without finding something that's beautiful to paint. I'm in love with this area and uh, the light and the coloring, the, the climate is quite conducive to artists mm -hmm. <laughs> being around and being able to plein air paint. It never gets overly hot for the most part um, and I'm going to try to plein, plein air paint throughout the winter this next year. So you do feel that the plein air experience has um, helped you move forward as an artist? Absolutely, because first of all, the plein air experience the way we do it, you have an artist date every week. Forcing yourself to paint plein air once a week will make you a better painter. And then having to paint plein air forces you to see the big picture, um, to really open your eyes and see things uh, the way you never see them in a, pic in a picture. Do you have any advice for someone who might be thinking about coming out to an artist gathering and just maybe feeling a little intimidated about their skill or about how they would be accepted. The, We're the very open and there are all levels. I consider myself a beginner. We're more than willing to help. We have help sessions in the winter. We do many lessons in the winter and just it's a very friendly group. This is Prudy Barber. She's a professional painter and a member of the board of, um, at the Jordan River Arts Council and she's been um, painting with the Artist Gatherings group for many years. And you also have a studio. I do, I have a small studio at home, and it's, it's great. We, we live on a small lake, and um, there's all different kinds of moods and feelings, you know, with the fog coming in, and so that's an important aspect of painting, to capture that. Can you talk about the contrast in the ways that you work in your studio with the ways that you work in plein air? Uh, in working with plein air, I especially would like to capture some of the feeling of the place 
where I am in plein air. For example, here, I'm staring at these flat ladies, which someone called them, uh, up against the natural weathered wood. And it's just a really cool feel and contrast between the, the ladies with their lovely material in their dresses and then they're up against this uh, barnwood type place. So that's a big difference. So you, when you approach a plein air session, you kind of look around and get a feel for the, the place and then focus in on a specific thing. Right. It's just really neat to be, to be outside and have that be a part of it. But even outside, I mean, I first do a, a sketch, just a thumbnail sketch, and um, that really is great because it helps me to, to zero in on where the shadows are and where the darks and lights are, and then try to have that vision come through in the finished painting. Do you have any tips for someone who is maybe a little hesitant to come out and paint in plein air? Um, my first thought is to not be afraid to do, to do it and to try it and just to pick up your um, paints, whatever they are, whether it's just a pencil and go out, find something that you like to, to look at. It doesn't matter what it is. This is Yvonne Schmidt. She's been um, a part of our group for quite a while and you've been painting for how long, Yvonne? I didn't start painting until after I retired. So I've been painting about 12 years. Well, uh, much like the other artists, I usually will walk around um, a location and um, decide which scene kind of hits me and, and, and thrills me. Um, so I will sit down and uh, get myself in a comfortable shaded spot and start sketching the essential parts um, of my composition. I, I need to at least block in, you know, where the building's going to be. I try to think about where I'm going to have my center of interest. It's got ivy all over the wall, so I'm, I'm putting the foliage in first. Um, I found that if I can do the foliage uh, on the painting first, it uh, kind of takes shape for me and, and then I can just be f loose and free with wherever I put the foliage. I just use the, um, the flowers or the building or the scene as inspiration for me. It kind of just gets me started and then once I get into it, then I find whether I want to or not, I'm off in another direction. <laughs> if you're just out here having fun like I am, um, you can make your scene anything you want um, and any color you want and put any flowers in. For instance, the flowers in, in the uh, flower box over there. I don't even know what I will end up putting down here in this flower box. I will wait and decide if I've got a lot of cool in the painting already, I'll put some warm flowers in there. If I've got a lot of warm, I'll put cool flowers in there. So um, I like being able to change a scene and sort of make it, make it my own. You've been to a lot of artist gatherings. Do you have a memorable experience from one? Um, yes. Um, my most memorable experience was probably when we painted at the llama farm. And um, I was sitting out in this field watching this kind of a herd of, of llamas up on a hill and deciding that, oh, that's what I want to paint. But behind me, I could feel a, a, a presence. And I, when I turned around and looked, there was this little baby alpaca sitting right behind me just staring at me, and I could actually feel his eyes on me, staring at me. And at that point I decided, oh no, I don't want to do those llamas. I have to paint this little guy over here. So I did a total about face and turned around and started sketching him. And it, he is so cute. And, he, yeah, and 
I'm really happy with how it came out because you can see the wonder in his eyes and the curiosity. So and that's an example of how you don't really know what, you know, what you're going to come out of this experience with. You just go in with an open mind, an open heart, you just take your paints and let it happen. Sometimes spontaneous things happen. Yes. I remember that painting as yes. one of my favorites.